<laughs> hey there, friends. Welcome to day 24 of the 40 day sugar fast by Wendy Spake. Um, healing past hurts is the topic for today. And I'll be honest with you, this is a sensitive topic for me um, because I do have past hurts. However, um, I mean, I have learned how to uh, cope with them and how to get through them. And um, I have also sought counseling over them. So when I read this chapter, even though I have healed over my past um, trials, it still brings up the pain. Uh, it still brings up what I went through um, in the past. And it, it uh, reminds me of the deep relationship that I have with Christ today and how that has changed my life so drastically. And she talks about, well, she begins off with a um, prayer for the abused. And um, it was a tough prayer for me to get through because uh, it was just, I, it reminded me of the pain that I experienced. And if you're going through some pain, if you've been abused in the past, if you've been hurt in some way in the past, listen. It, you're not alone. It does feel like you're alone when you go through it. That no one else is sim is simply going through what you're going through. Um, and uh, it seems very um, secretive or quiet that or that no one cares. Um, it it's tough. It's really tough and it can really leave us in a place where Satan just has a hold, a grip on our heart and doesn't want to let go. And it's really tough to get through those times. And, but she says, you are loved beyond measure and created for the explicit purpose of a safe and saving love relationship with your creator. He made you and adores you because you are his. Redeeming broken things is what he is all about. He can redeem you. I, when I was going through, so my story, real, real quick in a nutshell. Um, when I was um, a teenager, uh, closer to my adult years, um, I was uh, raped by a family friend. And... Um, and it shattered my world. Um, I thought it was something that I would have a relationship with that person. And um, it didn't turn out that way. And, um, and I had to deal with that rape all the way through my adult years. Until I actually got uh, counseling from a Christian counselor. Um, because no one believed me. No one believed me because they were too good of friends with others. And so it was tough. Not even my own parents believed me. And um, it did feel like I was alone. Uh, but the more and more that I sought counseling and I sought God and prayer, the more and more I was able to deal with it and talk about it with other people. I have since then been able to talk with other uh, young adults or teenagers that they themselves have been raped. Um, and uh, I was able to uh, just talk out some situations um, that they've experienced that they felt alone, but I could relate to. And, you know, even though God does not um, want us to sin, and even though we experience sin, He can still bring goodness from it. And uh, one of that, one of those things was having a relationship with Him. He brought me to having a dynamic relationship with Him right now. And I really... I would never want to go through everything that I went through. 
However, if it led me right here to being able to be this close to Christ, I would, I would go through it again because where I am now, God has renewed me. He has restored me and he can restore you. If you're dealing with something in the past that, that, um, has torn you apart day in and day out, he can bring you peace. He can piece you back together and he can restore your soul to being something magnificent. You have to trust him and know that he loves you and be able to uh, let him heal you. But she says the Holy Spirit lives in you, perfecting you, healing you, and transforming you little by little as you journey toward Christ's likeness and toward Christ himself. I will say, praise God that he is a consistent and persistent God because I wouldn't be here if he wasn't. I would have just gone and fallen to the world because that's what I thought I was worth. So, but because I found that I am a child of God, I am his daughter, I am his, that he loves me and that I, I am a part of his family, adopted into his family. I have worth and you have worth. And that is what makes this relationship with Christ so beautiful is that I know that he values me. And we know this because of his word. The more you spend time in his word, the more you see how genuine he is, how he restores people in their brokenness. So she says he can renew you when you surrender to him as your, rede as your redeemer, remaker, renewer, reknitter. I just, I can't stress that enough. I really can't. Um, I know when you're in the midst of being abused, I know it's hard. It's really hard to trust God. It's really hard to battle day in and day out the abuse. Uh, I'll, I will be open and honest. My husband and I are very open and honest about our marriage. Uh, for the first 12 years of our marriage, I was in a verbally abusive and, um, it was not physically or sexually abusive, but um, uh, my marriage was mainly verbally abusive. He um, treated me poorly, um, but that was before he found Christ too. And um, fortunately, in our circumstance, um, my husband decided to seek God and really, really trust him that he could renew his soul, and he did. God turned him around and made him one of the best men I have ever met in my entire life. And my marriage is so joyful and happy. And it wasn't for 12 years. We were in turmoil. We were, we were on the edge of divorce. In fact, he brought it up several times. And, but yet, God has a plan Sometimes it's not, it's not healthy for us to stay in these relationships. Sometimes it's not healthy for us to continue to um, think that it's okay, that our spouses will change or our boyfriends are, they'll change, they'll come around. Sometimes they don't. And in my first case, when I was raped, they didn't. He left me abused and used. And that's how I went through life, feeling abused and used. I felt victimized and I lived in that victim mentality because everything I did just pointed to I was not good enough. And it always tied me back to the trauma that I had faced when I was younger. And so... Know that it starts with you. It starts with you surrendering to him as your redeemer, as your remaker, as your renewer, as your renitter. And I promise you, 
when you wholeheartedly sur surrender to him, he will walk through your valley, valley with you and he will renew you. He will give you a life worth living. He will give you worth. He will give you value. Everything that you so long. And I just, I can't express that enough. I really can't. Because I can't go through that experience with you. Only God can. So she says, I invite you to directly ask the Lord if you're running from uh, to sugar because you're running from past or present pain. So I was, I was running from my past and present pain. I kept thinking that it's bound to get better. But somehow I kept finding that hole, that root that everyone else surpassed. They didn't fall into, they didn't get tripped up on, but I did. But it wasn't until I sought clarity. It wasn't until I surrendered to Christ and allowed him to come into my life fully to renew me, to change me. And I couldn't be any happier. And I wish that so much for you. If you are struggling with the past, if you are really torn from what has happened to you, please surrender to him and know that you are loved and you are so worth it. She shares a beautiful poem. Um, it's by Rebecca K. Reynolds. If you have it in your book, please read it. It's, it really is how I felt around everything. Um, and she says, has he helped you understand your complicated story and some of the age old reasons why you turn to sugar in lieu of him? For me, yes, he has. And he continues to reveal to me the things that I still run to sugar for or bread for. Um, and he's bringing me clarity around those things. And she says, knowledge is power. It is very powerful. But you can't, you, you, knowledge is power, but if you don't do anything with it, it's nothing at all. It's just knowledge. So be sure to take some time to seek God. And each time, as she says here, each time you are triggered to heal the hurt with sugar, choose to respond instead by going to the one who can heal your hurt with his love. Self-medicating your pain with food keeps you from the great physician. And it does because you think that you've got it on your own. Trust me, I've been there. Still struggle with it sometimes. I got it, God. I got it. I can handle it by doing this. I can numb myself by, by doing this. I got it, God. And what happens is we keep putting band-aids and band-aids and band-aids over things and they never truly heal. We try to pretend they're not there, but they're wide open. And the only one that can stitch them up and heal you clean is our great physician, our Lord and our Savior. So let's read the, um, the prayer she has for us today. Lord Jesus, do what you are so good at doing. Knit me together again on the inside. Re-knit me and renew me and make me whole again. Fill my aching places with your holy comfort. As I learn to rest in your nearness, Lord, transform my thought life. Re-knit my thoughts about myself. Not only does my, my self-loathing hurt me, but it hurts you too. Teach me to love myself because you love me. Give me the eyes to see how loved I am. Fill my mind with understanding. Teach me what it means to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Though people have un unmade me with their abuse, Lord, you have the authority to remake me. Mend me, Lord, and let me know the joy of being whole and wholly chosen. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Yes, please, if you're beating yourself up with self-loathing, if you feel that you're not worth it, you are very much worth it and you are very loved. Yes, Lord, please teach us to love ourselves because he loves us. So, may you find peace today. Blessings.